Welcome back to the part two of Larry and Gloria Coffee and Connect from Nashville, Tennessee on our special Christmas special that we have. Yes, happy to have our siblings with us. Last week, we had a great time and uh, wow, just good to be together. Yes, it is. And our kids have been a great help to us and a great friendship all through the years. We can't wait to get together when we're when we're right. in the area. And so LaShawn, you know, you are our first child. And why don't you introduce your siblings? I am LaShawn, my sister, LaDawn, and Donovan, my brother. Which is nice to have all the siblings in the same town, you know. Um, we get to see each other um, unexpectedly. Sometimes we just pop in, the doorbell rings, and especially my <laughs> sister, she's like, I'm here. Yes. So that's nice. And uh, of course, <laughs> we were saying that we had gone to Donovan's. Uh, so it's just really nice to experience your siblings as friends more than just siblings. You know, you get to know them. Even you you guys, you know, to know your parents more as people instead of just your parents and just understand who you are as a, um, a person and, and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun to just get to know my family on a whole different level. Since we've all been in the same town, we get to see each other a lot more, which is really nice because usually it's been about once a year, once, you know, maybe twice a year we see each other. So that's been Family's a really important. Fun. Family's important. It is and, important. Uh, I, you know, I always told you kids, I don't know if you remember, but when you were small and it was, if there would be something that was going on or, or if, if there was something that could cause friction or whatever, I say, remember, all your friends are going to yeah, come right. and go. That's right. Remember that. But never, ever let anything come between you and your siblings, between each other. Because when the bottom line, and it's true, you think about it, you can go through a lot of trouble, but really it's basically going to come down to your family that's going to stand behind you. And that's why there's a battle for the family, especially at Christmas time. At Christmas time, the devil would just love to come in and bring in unforgiveness, bring in friction uh, do, with the feelings of, I don't want to go there. I got to sit there in that house for two days with my relatives or my family. I thank God for our family. Yes. You are all three of your kids are miracle <laughs> uh, children. Um, I had difficulty carrying you but God allowed you to come into our family I say we fight for our family we don't fight each other in the family we fight for the family yeah but honey what's happening is we used to always watch and take care of and protect our children we've seen a reversal of that we see now our children are protecting us <laughs> I love it <laughs> I never thought I would get to that spot. It seems like when we moved here, of course, it comes with breathing, you know, year yeah. by year. And so I know our kids look at us like they remember seeing us strong in the early days. And yet now they see us uh, not moving quite as quickly as we used to, or maybe not remembering as much. But that's why we have children, so they can remember right. for us and tell <laughs> us what, when, and how. Well, it's an honor. It really is. You know, the Bible talks about that, about, you know, uh, honoring your parents. But for us, it's just, it's, it's an honor to be able to reciprocate, you know, the caring and the love that you've given us through the years. And um, it's just instilled in us, hey, you know, step up and do what we got to do. And, you know, so it is. I mean, we appreciate it. Honor. Yeah. Well, Don, <laughs> what were you going to say? I was just going to say that I felt like that was demonstrated very well from mom and dad and how they honored their parents in front of us. So a lot of the stuff is, you know, not taught, it's caught. And we caught that from mom and dad and how they would honor grandma and grandpa Brooks and grandma and grandpa Lundstrom, um, helping them with things, spending time with them. Um, all of those things were just, just a natural flow for us because they were demonstrated so well for us. So thanks for that, mom and dad. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, we thank knew you. that uh, four o'clock. Central time. Mother, if we were in Sisseton, she was going to her mom's. <laughs> and not to bother her, she was going to have time with her mother. And uh, you've always kept that, and you always called your mom every single night, didn't you? Called mom every night when we got free moments with our Verizon phone. Called her every night for years, and then we would talk and laugh and share, and then we'd pray together. And you know, what a precious time. And then when I get home, I just knew that I would work in my office till four o'clock. And that was her coffee time where she was up in the um, Greenleaf living there. 
And uh, so I would go up there and have coffee with her and such a special, special time. And I just, yeah, I honored because I just loved her so much. It was never a chore. It was always just the greatest treasure. It yeah. really was. And you kids, I told Larry the other night, you kids honor us. Yes, they do. I mean, the honor that you showed us, I can't even explain how much it means to your dad and I. Uh, you, you're just there. You're concerned for us. You're always there to bring us something, to do something for us. And it, it just really, really means a lot, especially at this time of life. Now, Marty, also, you have a couple of pictures of uh, of the life in the road just before coming home for holidays, and that was always we've talked about last week about how important it is of of um, coming home. You kids, what was the song you used to sing on the way home? We're on our way to Grandpa's house. Yes, you kids yeah. would sing that, would and the closer we got to Sisseton. And I mean, it didn't make any difference how cold it was or if it was a blizzard, uh, trying to get through to get back to Sisseton. Yeah. Yes, I remember when they would, I remember when the kids were, you know, here in Nashville and we were still in Sisseton and they would come home to see us. I remember how we'd walk and we'd pace, when are they coming? They, you know. Kept and, looking for the lights coming down the and road. And one year they said Donovan could not make it home for Christmas. Oh, and our hearts were broken. <laughs> where they were. And just when they pulled in here, I stood, two minutes and Donovan <laughs> jumps out of the car. He had he told us he couldn't be there, but he surprised us. I they like come the from surprise. There was with flip-flops, I think even shorts, didn't you? I think Absolutely. We hit, him, we hit him in the back of the car and he was, he was laying in the back of the car so you didn't see him when we pulled up. And then uh, when you came out to help us with our, with our luggage, he popped out. <laughs> I've always loved I've always loved surprising them. I've, I've yes, surprised you. them and I've surprised them in Hawaii in a baggage claim. In a baggage done, claim. <laughs> mom like walked right mind. yeah, mom walked right past me and then she looked like she recognized me and I was like, oh hi, <laughs> how are you? You know you've been away from each other too long when you have to go like, boy, that kid looks familiar, looks just like looks just like mine. But this is one of the pictures uh, when one of uh, Steve Boer happened to be with us at the time. And here's uh, Larry uh, wearing the way in the left and LaDawn in her little pink outfit that you, even though she was just a toddler, she didn't want to let that, she wanted to sleep in it, eat in it and everything. And then LaShawn, and to think about she was in front of the bus and now she's been driving coaches for how many years? 20 some. 20 some years. There's Londa and Lisa and Lowell and Connie and and little um, LJ, the little cowboy. And it it was just something about no matter how cold it was, when you got in that coach, it was perking with that real yeah. nice heat. Oh, yeah. It, it was just so nice. It was great. Those buses really put a lot of miles on because they ran every day of the year up until Christmas. You yes. Know, with icicles. And you just think about the nights, Dad, that, you know, you and Lowell drove, Leon. Uh, through the blizzards and I mean mom and Connie and Rhonda praying us through trying to get us to the next city I mean that's that's stressful and when you think of the thousands and thousands we have no idea how many thousands of miles were but millions. The, but the millions of miles of protection that God protects on the mountain slopes yeah. and I mean on ice and in storms and in tornadoes I mean <laughs> we, I mean, what a gift the partners, you know, had provided those buses for us to go all those years. I oh, mean, yeah. how many lives were changed because of that? Hundreds, it, hundreds of thousands, a hundred, couple hundred thousand. I think, I think we had nine vehicles in 50 years. Yeah. And then and the, the partners the farmer, got behind us. And then the farmers that would donate the yeah. fuel to, to get us yeah. on. I mean, what a great gift, you know? Yeah. It's pretty special. Yeah, it, was, it was great. They've kept us going all these years. And so each of you, uh, LaShawn, you didn't drive the coach. You did, maybe you tried a couple of times, but LaShawn started to drive. And then after she left the road, then Donovan was with us and he drove for what, four or five years, five years before yeah, he left probably. the road? Yep, probably. And uh, so what a blessing that was. And uh, even on the road, it was so great to have the kids. And, and in the last year, when it was just Donovan on there. Uh, so it was just Larry, Donovan, and I. Right. 
And so we, we did it all. Yeah. We drove, we set up, we tore down, we preach, we preach, we did, we did the altar calls, we did the yeah. counseling, we worked the book table. <laughs> and then we, and so by the end of the day, you know, and of course he was doing school during the day. And so it was full schedule for all the kids to get their school done and get ready for services at night. But when we come on, a special perk in the last years on the road is when we come out, Donovan would have the front of the coach just spick and span, and he had the coffee pot perking with the candle lit. So with when we music going. with music going, so when we finally came out, it was like, "Tell the world to go away," and it was yeah. just so nice to close the door and have that atmosphere and feel so safe. You kids have always made us feel safe and loved, and we're so loyal to us on the road. Wow, wow. Um, I think we had a. Uh, there's a picture of Montana. My dream was, was for a tradition oh. that I always wanted is uh, this is our kids. And that's sweet. That's our three siblings. Those days go by so quickly. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so I decided that I heard about people cutting their own Christmas trees and they do that a lot in Tennessee. Yeah. And usually when we got home, the trees were gone because we wouldn't get home until December you know, like 21st or 22nd, a couple of days, the 23rd of December. And so trees would be gone. But one year I said, we were out in Kalispell, Montana. And I heard about all these people cutting down trees. And I said, I want to cut us a fresh tree to take home. And so this, this rancher, he says, come on out to our ranch and we've got trees. And you can see by the picture, there are trees all over. So I don't know if you remember that, LaDawn. You remember that, LaShawn, do you? I do. That's a big tree. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. It's like the Griswold. Yeah, and, I don't and think we, that was we didn't tree. cut that one. I used no. that Thank one goodness. just to just to impress you. But it's anyway, not, it's not going into the yard, Russ. It's going into the living room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the one we actually got is that one picture in the bottom that was 1974, and we've uh -huh. got it all uh, ready. We're dragging it through. So the purpose of that, and of course, look at Lashawn. Wherever Lashawn was, there was a I know, I was just looking at that. There's a dog. A dog <laughs> always followed Lashawn wherever she went. And so for us, we made a big deal out of this of cutting our own tree, in which we did. We hauled it out. We And then we said, well, now this was October. And then the, the people said, well, that's okay because it'll last because most trees are cut in, in October and then they ship them out. And so they're they're months they, they're months they've been they've been shipped and then they spray them green and whatever so they look like they're fresh so that great so we have a fresh tree that we cut so we got home on about the 22nd or 23rd of december went out to the trailer opened yes. the back and lo and behold there was sticks and needles sticks and needles there wasn't a there wasn't <laughs> a needle left on that tree <laughs> so then it was we had to rush to watertown it was 60 miles away and all the trees almost were all gone, but we finally did find one. Yeah, and you, you were really good about, um, the one thing you splurged on was getting a flocked Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah. it was special. That is a very, yeah, it's a very special tradition uh, that mom always had. I always, you know, we always knew that it was gonna be a flocked tree and it was so beautiful. Now we broke the tradition because we can't afford them. They're so expensive. Oh. <laughs> back to artificial but that's okay oh speaking of yeah speaking of we when we moved here and, it, and you know you're really pinching trying to make all everything you know buying a house and oof, that's a whole different deal buying a house in in nashville tennessee versus yes. back in yes. roberts county of Sisseton, south that's dakota right. the cost anyway just trying to be very frugal and so what we'll do for a tree well we decide well you know what do you do so anyway we ended up going online and they have what they call neighborhood. And so we saw a tree that was advertised for sale, an artificial one. So we brought Donovan helped and we got the whole, got the tree here and the kids came over. And I think we have some pictures here. There's of a tree that we, um, uh, there we go. So I have to explain, Donovan, explain this. So basically they, they were trying to get rid of it because the base, there was something wrong with the base of the tree. So the tree would not sit up straight. It would just want to fall over. And we tried everything, and then Dad went out and got some bricks, some rope. Uh, we had it anchored down to uh, even to the wall, and Dad was like, "No, we'll make it work." And we uh, we definitely messed with that for quite a while just to get it so it'd be semi-safe. 
But uh, as always, give dad some duct tape and some rope and he'll make anything work. <laughs> And you know what? That rug there was also free. Somebody was giving that away and I brought it over for you. So that yeah, was that's free. right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that tree just, it went through a lot before. It, and then I think half of the lights went out the next year. So then yeah. we finally bought another one. We had to get one that we could actually, would actually stand and not use ropes to tie to the window, yes. to the bricks, stretch it out. And then and that's get crap. The <laughs> And your kids, your trees are beautiful. Yes. I enjoy seeing your trees at your home. Uh, any special memory that you kids remember? Um, your favorite Christmas or? I remember what you one. got for Christmas. I was really little. Uh, I was probably three years old. And uh, mom had me not stay in my, we had this little brown house outside of Sisseton. And uh, she had me stay in LaShawn's room with her. LaShawn had this little twin bed. And I didn't have a real, like, a decent bed yet. And uh, so I slept in there for a few nights. I'm sure LaShawn appreciated that. And then <laughs> for Christmas Eve, they opened the door and they had a canopy bed for me, a white canopy bed, which I was so thrilled with. And, and uh, actually, my daughter used that bed um, after, you know, I moved to Minneapolis and and she was little. I put that in her room, but that was a special Christmas. I'll always remember. <laughs> that that, I, that I, I remember Dad bringing me a dog for Christmas, <laughs> and I think we talked about that last year. But yeah, he brought Hunter the dog, and I I wanted a dog so bad. So if you didn't watch uh, last year's episode, the cliff note is he brought brought a dog, a uh, little black. Uh, spaniel to the house and we had so much fun that the, the, we were trying to potty train it which really tested mom's patience <laughs> and dad's patience and uh but no it was such a great gift uh that that was very memorable and then we as we said last year sent the uh, dog off to grapple lundstrom's house and it was never seen again so <laughs> animals just disappeared there disappeared. You, know, you, you, you can go back to last year's episode to, <laughs> actually the, did you pick up the dog at a at a rescue Shelter. place or? yeah i picked up at a you know it was the uh, it was a shelter you know over there and we knew we couldn't take it on the road yes. but yet we wanted he wanted a dog so badly so we, yeah. we figured that was the best way to do it yeah grandpa says i'm going to get this dog and i says hey wait a minute i says let me why don't you let me get the dog and I'll give it to Donovan. And of course, it, when we leave on the road, he's going to have to have some place to put it anyway. And so I says, then he'll we'll bring it out, and you'll be back to your dog again. <laughs> yep. But no, that was a great gift. We that that was a lot of fun, a lot of memories with that. Yeah. How about you, Lashawn? I've been trying to think. I don't really have anything that really. I mean, they were all just. I to me, it was just about being home. Um, I will say, though, that uh, one of the traditions that I we always enjoyed, the whole family, was that the Longs, Greg Long, Greg and Linda and their kids would come caroling and come to our house every Christmas Eve and sing songs. I mean, nobody yes. really carols anymore. And, and uh, so you know, blessed us. Oh, my. Yes, they were so precious. And they would come, you know, give up their, their Christmas Eve and, and sing for people. And that was just really special. Yeah. Giving. It yeah. was all about giving. That's right. Yeah, we had we had a piano there. And LaShawn was always every Christmas Eve and during the Christmas times, she would always play those Christmas carols. And then when you invited all of your, you had one night, you would invite your brothers. All the family. And, yeah. And the families over. And what a what a fun night that was when she played oh, the yes. music and everybody sang. And yeah, we got the piano down here. So now that's in her living room, or in her family room. Yeah, lots of lots of laughter. It's it's one time when people just let go and just really have fun and tell stories. I mean, our whole thing is you know no matter where we are, usually if we decide to take a vacation together, it's freezing and nobody can go out because it's too cold. So we end up sitting. <laughs> with a cup of coffee and just talking for hours and uh so that's what i enjoy just sitting down with everybody and just you know going over the the fun stories and the things that you know ridiculous things we had to deal with back in the day and you know when we we talk about when the longs were there or you know like your friends and there was 
you know, the Hagans that were there, mm-hmm. a Lowell's family. And when you all live that same life on the road, a lot of people don't understand. I mean, we're like circus people. Only circus people understand circus people. And so, I mean, we live the life so you could understand each other, you know. Well, and uh, that, it's interesting. That was- I'm sorry. It was interesting that a lot of people say, why don't you open up your gifts on Christmas morning? But we're night owls. So... For us, you know, opening up Christmas Eve made more sense because we would sleep, finally sleep in on, you know, Christmas morning and then, you know, then go see the rest of the family. But, um, yeah. But actually, but actually, we spread ours out because we, we so look forward to Christmas and we're only, we were only together for just such a short time. So we would open a, a few on Christmas Eve and then we'd open a couple on, on Christmas Day you know, or the rest of them, whatever, yeah. to just kind of spread it out a little bit. Donovan would just yeah. never vapes. Yeah. Last year we went for a ride. We got in our cars and we went and looked at Christmas lights. And there's a home here that's just literally made 10, maybe 10 minutes from us. Yes. And uh, a, a couple that had lost their daughter, I believe it was to cancer or whatever. And so anyway, but in her memory, they have this, his whole yard and home, it's like, it's, it's unbelievable. It, it's just beautiful. So we drove by there and it's, it's just known all over. People come from all over to see it. And then we got in our cars and we drove through, uh, I don't know what, down at the racetrack. And uh, so we got together and that was really fun. And then come back, and then we opened gifts and that was really, really great. So that's a good deal. You know, and you think about Christmas and uh you know, you t- uh, I, re- I heard a line yesterday from a friend of mine that she was on, on, on Sheila, and she said, many times we get really uh, caught up in getting, but she said, it's the giving. It's the giving that makes us, and Jesus Christ knew that. Jesus, you know, God gave his only son so we could be set free, so we could have joy, we could have eternal life. And, you know, to me, there's nothing, and I've seen this in my kids. I've just prayed, Lord, let this be an attribute that we do, that we love to give or love to encourage. And this time of year, people are so lonely. They're so hurting. My, literally, our phones and my kids' phones, they're, they're telling me stories of people who's calling them that are hurting or alone. They say, I just need to talk. Some that just yeah. don't have anything. And just to be available at this time, to be available to just encourage people. That is giving a gift that they so much need at this time. And so I'm I'm proud of my kids that they all have sensitive hearts, that they love to be there to help others. And and that's part of it. It's not just getting, that's, it's fun to give gifts, Mm -hmm. but to be able to give. I have a friend. Yes. I have a friend. on, on Facebook, um, you know, and she reached out to me and she's just, you know, really depressed and going through it and not happy and sad all the time and cannot find any kind of happiness. And I told her, everybody goes through it. Like we're all going through our things. And I said, you can't really rely on what the facade of Facebook is because everybody's putting their best face forward. I said, but everybody is hurting right now. Everybody's going through it. They just don't talk about it. And uh, so it's important that you know that, you know, we're all going through it, every one of us in different parts of our lives. And um, that's just normal. Everybody has these things they need to get through. But, you know, we're here as a family to support one another, but we're also a family with you, uh, The you know, the the coffee and connect, you know, if there's something that you need or prayer, or you just need to talk people right now just need to vent, you know, you're not the only ones that are going through this. Everybody's feeling this heaviness and sadness sometimes and, and people's families are hurting right now. And so we're here for you. If you need something, please reach out. Yes. People, people need the Lord. People need us and to be sensitive and to, and to, if somebody does call you, they do text you, you know, LaDonna's told me about somebody that she's ministering to, Donovan, the other night, it's a guy who was really homeless, and he brought food and a place to stay, you know, and whatever, to give a gift, of, give him money to be able to afford food or fuel or whatever it might be, 
and and to be sensitive at this time and not just christmas but always mm -hmm. but this is the time of year when people have the most giving spirit and to top that off we need to have the most forgiving yes, spirit. Yes. That is the greatest gift. There's not a family that has not been touched by unforgiveness, hurt, pain, broken dreams, hurt that has happened growing up, or be it in family, extended family, siblings, whatever it might be. And I talk to them day after day. But the greatest gift we can is get over it. Mm -hmm. Get over it. Is it worth harboring? Any feelings that has happened in the past, when Jesus Christ wants to just take away those feelings and just choose to forgive, make this Christmas a time that you choose to forgive somebody in your family or in your church or in your extended family. Maybe somebody says something unkind and just, you know, get, just get rid of it. It's not worth holding on to because you're the one who's miserable while the other one goes on living. And when once we forgive, we are set free and we have that joy by which we can uh, really just connect again. And that's what we're praying for many families that our phones are ringing off the hook of fractured families. And that's why Satan will take even the most precious time of the year of the greatest gift of salvation that Jesus provided by being born and more so when he died and he rose from the grave that we could live again. He's taking this holy time. And now even people I read the other day where SeaTac out there in Seattle, they, uh, they had their Christmas trees up in the airport and uh, somebody come up and said, well, uh, I, unless you let me put my tree up to represent mine, and then somebody else says, you take mine. So SeaTac took down their Christmas trees. Is that the answer? And I understand you're going to get a, a load of everybody from every culture, but we have to stand up for what Christmas really means. Jesus Christ, he was born in a little manger that was made out of a tree. Jesus hung on a cross Yes, that was made out of a tree. We have a Christmas tree that stands in our, in our homes that represent what are, they're a real tree. But that tree, when Jesus hung on the cross, took us to, this tree is to remind us of the greatest gift of Christmas that he could ever give us. And that was a gift of forgiving us of our sins and saying, there's nothing that you've yes. done that is too bad that I will never forgive. There's nothing too bad that you can't start over. He just says, I love you. Don't, don't try to get rid of all your things in your life. You're like, come to me as you are, and I will forgive you and give you a brand new life. So that's what it's all about. The gift of Christmas is a gift of forgiveness, the gift of giving, and the gift of, of loving people and helping them out. So we just have been so enjoyed this time together. This has been wonderful. And we just want to take a moment to, uh, to pray with you that God will bless your Christmas. Yes. And honey, do you want to pray for these families? Yes. Lord, we thank you for this time that we've had together on CCL today. Lord, there's families that have been families with us for, oh, they're all over the country, all of the, everywhere, Lord, in Hawaii and wherever it's at. These families have be become our friends and they count on us, Lord, for to pray for them. And Lord, we want to pray for them and we want to make sure that, Lord, we encourage everybody to open their heart. And Lord, let the forgiveness of the love of Jesus Christ come in through their hearts and let the blood of Christ wash every sin away. Now, Lord, if there's anything that we've said or done to anybody, Lord, we want to release that. Yes, make it right. Make it right. I thank you that, Lord, I've heard my family in conversations, LaShawn, LaDon, and Donovan, each one opening their hearts and apologizing and saying, hey, if I ever hurt you in any way, I am so sorry for it. And this is the key to life right there. And we thank you for it. Be with us. Bless our office staff. Lord, we got the greatest office staff in the world. Yes. And Lord, for all those that are helping us. And Lord, for our friends who support this ministry and keep us yes. going. Yes. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We thank the Lord for you, Marnie. Uh, we're going to just uh, thank you for joining us today. 
Yes, thank you so much again for tuning in to the, uh, really the second part of this special time of just uh, remembering special moments. And then honestly, what really matters in the season. Thank you, LaShawn, for reminding us that actually, uh, you know, everyone is often putting their kind of best self out there. And uh, we need to be aware and really be uh, looking around for those that we can make a difference in. Um, we really have that opportunity and, and uh, we're excited to be able to do that. And Gloria, just the beautiful reminder about forgiveness and how important it is. And so thank you for tuning in. And uh, we just encourage you and challenge you, uh, go out, give and forgive this season and of course always. Now, by the end of the day, we will have uh, the uh, program uploaded to www.larrylundstromministries.org and I, you can just go to the CC Live banner, click on the most recent video. Uh, it will be this one, obviously, because it's the most recent and uh, you can share it or view it at whatever time is convenient for you. Thank you again for tuning in. If you have enjoyed these Coffee and Connect Lives and hearing from Larry and Gloria weekly, we would love to make the opportunity available to you to support the ministry in this time. Here are a couple ways that you can do so. If you would like to send uh, by mail an appreciation gift, you can send it to Larry Lundstrom Ministries, PO Box 300, Sisseton, South Dakota, 57262. Uh, we will get that. And of course, it will be greatly appreciated. Also, you can go online and donate uh, that way. Uh, it is secure on our website at www.larrylundstromministries.org. Uh, we would appreciate that. And thank you so much uh, for uh, being faithful partners with us in praying for Larry and Gloria and uh, tuning in and letting us know uh, how they are impacting your lives or how they have in the past. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. By the way, I've had so many people ask us about the old television specials that we did for Christmas with the Lundstroms, all the Lundstroms. Now, this is really goes back in the archives of the 70s and 80s. And people say, I wish we could see him again. Guess what? You can. If you just go to YouTube, type in your type in your Google, YouTube, Lowell Lundstrom Ministries, Christmas television specials, or just television specials. Go to YouTube. And just type in Low Lundstrom Ministries television specials, and it'll bring up all the specials. And you can go back and watch all those special Christmas ones. In fact, people already and still are watching them at Christmas Eve and passing them on and these 40 years later. Wow. So if you want the archives, just like they do on television with the old time movies, pull them up and enjoy them, okay? We want to wish you a Merry Christmas to you and your mm -hmm. families. And may you feel God's peace and his joy. Just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Have a great, great Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye. About 50 years ago in South Dakota, the Lundstroms knelt in prayer to God one night. There the Savior sent us with the message that we should sing about eternal life. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man. And we'll keep traveling on, singing happy song until we hear God's call to glory land. We've met a lot of friends in all our travels. We're so blessed. We know their prayers have helped us stay alive. And we're so thankful. So if you ever feel impressed to mention my name, then you know it's my turn to drive. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man. And we'll keep traveling on, singing happy song until we hear God's call to glory land. Traveling on, singing happy songs 
Until we hear God's call in the 